Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Watch Me Build Stuff. I do kind of freeform design work on this channel. Uh, so basically whenever I'm doing some design work that I think it's interesting for other people to also watch and follow me throughout the journey, I record these videos and put them on my YouTube channel. Um, so today I'm planning to do some redesign work on the graphical user interface or uh, GUI that I built previously for my open source uh, product called Ubopod. If you want to learn more about Ubopod, you can see the link in the description. In this video, I'm gonna focus mainly on the GUI and some redesign work. So basically the graphical user interface here, I'm gonna pull it into the frame so that you can see the GUI. It's a simplified GUI, which gives your Raspberry Pi full control uh, meaning that it needs to, uh, the need to remove, to plug in a keyboard or monitor, and even SSH to your Pi to perform cer certain tasks. For example, I can go here to settings, I can go to Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, add, and then it, 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 it open, opens up a, a web UI to enter a Wi-Fi password or scan a QR code with camera. You can use the GUI to monitor system resources like memory, CPU, disk, and CPU temperature, uh, or application statuses. You can use it for remote access, enable, disable, SSH, set up Raspberry Pi Connect or VS Code Tunnel. You can also use it to set up egress or VPN options. So we support Twingate, Pangolin, and a few other options out of the box. You can use it to get IP addresses of different network interfaces on your Raspberry Pi and also see the host name. You can use uh, the GUI to install Docker Compose applications through the web UI, and you can use it for user management to add and delete user accounts or reset password for a specific user account. And since the GUI is 100% customizable and programmable, you can set, up to, set it up to show uh, certain notifications when something happens on the system it'll show you a notification on it so um, i'm going to talk more later about the gui and the software behind it but for the for brevity and keeping this video short i'm just gonna give you an overview here i've received a lot of uh positive feedback on the on the design of this gui uh, but i realized that the current form factor and the fact that it's hardly integrated into the enclosure uh, limits its potential and uh, I've noticed a lot of people uh, use Raspberry Pi inside mini server racks or under different settings and this kind of hard integration does not really work for them so I want to kind of refactor this 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 uh, graphical user interface into standalone module that you can mount it basically on anything so it kind of like decouples this from from the design of the enclosure so for example, uh, right now people are mounting, they have these like jet KVMs and they mount them on their uh, mini racks and it shows the IP address and how many clients are connected. You can think of this as like uh, that kind of like control, but it gives you like the full control over your Raspberry Pi. It's not just controlling your KVM. So another reason actually I'm doing a redesign is that if you notice this this uh display is sitting flat on the device i don't like it because i put this on my desk so i kind of prefer the display to have an angle so i want it to be like kind of 45 degree angle so that it's 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 easier to see it in the front of the device so this modularization and decoupling of the gui can also help me with redesign of future generations of of Uberpod. So I'm basically democratizing this kind of GUI. You can actually access this GUI inside your browser. So let me show you this. So if I go to the URL of Uberpod in ubo-uc.local 4321 and um, now you can see the GUI here. Perfect. Now I'm gonna dismiss. So as you can see, these two are kind of in sync. So if I press home button, this will go back. So this will also allow you to use that graphical user interface on your phone. So uh, it's, it's a very versatile graphical user interface. 
All right, so I'm gonna put this outside of the frame. I'm bringing this back and let's talk about how the GUI is implemented in hardware. Um, basically, this is a TFT 240 by 240 uh, resolution screen. It's a very low cost TFT display. And basically this connects with the flex cable to the connector here. And this is basically connected to Raspberry Pi through standard SPI bus. And uh, and then the keypad is a silicone uh, compression mold silicone keypad that goes over these buttons. So I have seven different buttons here. These buttons are connected to this uh, GPIO expander chip, which connects to I squared C bus. So this I GPIO expander is AW nine five two three. You can look up the data sheet. It's a Chinese. Um, IC and it's a very low cost option for doing GPIO expansion and I used this in the design a long time ago and uh, I've kept it it's pretty good and um, and I'm gonna keep this in the design so here the idea is that I wanna do another PCB with a smaller form factor that only holds the display I'm actually not connecting all the pins from the GPIO expander. Maybe I can connect them to some status lights. And uh, so I can connect some RGB LEDs and create some status lights. But the idea here is that to cut the PCB short to kind of this form factor and then uh, have a smaller PCB. Um, but I also want to make connection to Raspberry Pi plug and play. So. Uh, I did a little bit of research and for this I think a very good option is using iSpy. So this is uh, iSpy from Adafruit. So it's basically uh, a FPC flex cable that brings SPI, I2C and some GPIO pins into one 18 pin connector. And uh, basically the idea is that you get the hat from Adafruit uh, and uh, which is basically the breakout for the iSpy to the FPC and then you connect your other side of the FPC to to the display so uh, it'll be like a standalone module connected to Raspberry Pi through this 18 pin uh, FPC cable so I would rather keep this video kind of at the high level um, and uh, in the next video I'm gonna go into the keycap design and finish the design in KiCad and then order the PCB and assemble it through JLC PCB or maybe PCB Bay. Uh, they've actually offered uh, to sponsor my videos. Maybe we can uh, do some, uh, have them build uh, the PCBs. And uh, I also have a small pick in place machine here uh, that I use for prototyping. And if you want to, me to see, use the, the pick and place machine to assemble some of these boards, let me know in the comments. I don't know if that's gonna be something a lot of people want to see, but I can bring it up and, and show some small uh, assembly in the, using the machine. And I can also consider doing some hand assembly, but if JLC, PCB or PC Raid do all the assembly, I would rather really not spend time on it. But if people want to see it, I'd be, I'd be down to do some and uh, assembly of these boards. I also want to do a 3D printed enclosure so that it allows people to mount the, the GUI on a, on a mini rack. So a lot of people may want to use this graphical user interface on it uh, and connect it to a Raspberry Pi that they have inside a mini rack. And uh, I can design the enclosure for that and people can mount the GUI inside the mini rack. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe. Uh, to my channel to follow me on the design journey uh, the design by the way is going to be fully open source and you should be able to replicate most of it if you have a 3d printer and uh, i mean it really depends on your building skills or how comfortable you're to, you're uh, with uh, kind of building these things from scratch but if there is really good reception on this uh, idea i might consider building a a small batch of these and put it on my Tindy shop. I'm gonna put a link to my Tindy shop also in the video description. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching the video and until next time, this is Ubo Maker Merdot.